The penultimate round of the 1954 World Championship unfolded on September 5th at the renowned Monza circuit in Italy. Even though the battle for the championship title concluded two weeks ago with Juan Manuel Fangio's decisive victory, all the competing teams were geared up for an intense showdown at Monza, eager to claim victory at the prestigious Italian Grand Prix. The Daimler-Benz team, maintaining their usual three-driver lineup, brought four cars to the track, featuring two of each modification. During practice, team leaders Fanjo and Kling tested both models and discovered that the streamlined body variant allowed them to complete a lap two seconds faster. Consequently, they opted to use this modification for the Grand Prix. At the Ferrari camp, all eyes were on Ascari, who had rejoined the team for this event, thanks to Mr. Lancia lending him once more since the Turin cars were still not race ready. After unsatisfactory results with Maserati at Reims and Silverstone, Ascari was set to race Ferraris again. Ferrari recognized that Ascari was potentially the only driver capable of outpacing Fanjo, though it was uncertain if he could do so after such a long hiatus and with Fanjo in peak form. Nonetheless, it was a gamble worth taking. Besides Ascari, Scuderia Ferrari's lineup included their main drivers, Jose Froilan Gonzalez, Mike Hawthorne, and Maurice Trintignant, along with temporary driver Umberto Maioli. All the drivers opted for the intermediate Ferrari 625, except for Gonzalez, who chose the new Ferrari 553. In the Maserati camp, there was unprecedented activity with no fewer than six De Dion cars under official care. Sterling Moss continued to lead the team, as he did in Switzerland. His teammates included Luigi Villoresi, Sergio Mantovani, Roberto Mieres, Luigi Musso, and Louis Rosier. While Friday had been overcast and heavy, Saturday turned into a perfect Italian day with intense heat. Despite practice starting at 2 p.m., the scorching temperatures made drivers reluctant to begin. However, the qualifying for the Italian Grand Prix was thrilling, as three drivers from three different teams fiercely contested for pole position. In this intense battle, Juan Manuel Fanjo in his Mercedes emerged as the fastest, clocking a time of 1 minute 59. However, it was clear that both Ferrari and Maserati were close on his heels, eager to challenge his dominance. Local favorite Alberto Ascari claimed second place, delighting the home crowd. In his first attempt, he outpaced his Ferrari teammates and trailed Fanjo by a mere two-tenths of a second. Sterling Moss, driving for Maserati, secured third place. Once again, he earned a spot in the front row of the starting grid, trailing Ascari by a mere one-tenth of a second. The only driver who managed to stay within one second of Fanjo's time was his teammate, Carl Kling. Kling was quick and managed to outpace Gonzalez's Ferrari. A national sports car race entertained the spectators and primed everyone for the main event on Sunday morning. By 3 p.m., the Grand Prix cars were lined up in three rows, ready for the start. The weather conditions were perfect for racing, warm and dry, with a slight cloud cover shielding the intense heat of the sun. With the drivers so closely matched in qualifying, anticipation among the audience was high for an exciting race. Naturally, most tifosis, means Italian racing enthusiasts, were expecting their favorite, Ascari, to clinch the victory. Drivers geared up for an unrelenting test of skill, navigating 504 kilometers across 80 demanding laps on the renowned Monza circuit. And now, ladies and gentlemen, brace yourselves for an unforgettable spectacle. The 1954 Italian Grand Prix stands among the most legendary races, where the epic battle between man and machine unfolded into one of Formula One's greatest showdowns of all time. Kling made a stunning start, 
catapulting from fourth on the grid to seize the lead of the race. Fanjo, Ascari, Moss and Gonzalez trailed closely behind him. As the first lap concluded, the two Mercedes-Benz cars remained at the front of the pack, hinting at a dominant performance reminiscent of their success at Rams. Spectators and experts alike began to believe that the streamlined Mercedes-Benz cars would prove untouchable once again. In the new Ferrari 553, Gonzalez aggressively overtakes Moss, securing fourth place in an early part of the race. At the outset of the race, Beres Gordini suffers an engine failure, forcing the Frenchman to retire early from the race. Gonzalez makes a decisive move on his teammate Ascari, overtaking him and securing third place in the race. The Tifosi, fervently supporting their beloved Ferrari drivers, erupt with a mix of anticipation and excitement as Gonzalez maneuvers skillfully past Ascari. The roar of approval echoes through the stands, signaling their approval of Gonzalez's bold and strategic overtake. With each lap, the atmosphere at Monza intensifies, fueled by the passion and loyalty of the Italian fans, who hope for a Ferrari victory on their home turf. On lap four, Kling committed a minor error while negotiating one of the corners. Such was the intensity of the racing that before he could recover, Fanjo had already overtaken him, followed closely by Gonzalez, Ascari and Moss. This sequence of events demoted the German driver from his previous position to fifth place in the blink of an eye. Moss launches an attack on Ascari and successfully overtakes the former world champion, advancing to third place. Ascari, quickly adapting to the new car, launches a determined attack. In just one lap, he overtakes Moss, Fanjo and Gonzalez, catapulting himself into the lead of the race to the ecstatic cheers of the Tifosi. Ascari demonstrates his mastery and proves that he has not lost his touch as a formidable driver. Meanwhile, Hawthorne skillfully maneuvers past Kling, securing fifth place, while his teammate Trintignant launches a daring move, overtaking Hermann to gain another position on the track. In a bold move, Fanjo charges ahead, overtaking Gonzalez and securing second place. Hermann heads into the pits for a spark plug replacement, causing him to plummet to second to last place in the race. Villaresi not only overtook Kling, but also surpassed Hawthorne, narrowing the gap to Ascari to just 20 seconds and maintaining that distance consistently without losing any ground. This display of steadfastness was truly remarkable, showcasing Villaresi's skills on the track. By lap 15, Fanjo had successfully broken away from Gonzalez and Moss, shedding their slipstream and starting to narrow the gap with Ascari ahead. While Moss got past Gonzalez and settled in third place. Gonzalez encountered gearbox problems, forcing the Argentine to make an unscheduled pit stop and retire from the race. At the 20 lap mark, just a quarter of the way into the race, Fanjo had caught up to Ascari. Moss was closely observing the duel between these two seasoned drivers. Meanwhile, Villaresi was putting on a remarkable performance, sticking close to Ascari without losing even a second. The situation became increasingly evident, with Fanjo showing no patience for Ascari's antics. On lap 22, they crossed the finish line neck and neck. By lap 23, Fanjo was in the lead, but Ascari reclaimed the front position on lap 24. For the next six laps, their positions were constantly changing, with the gap never exceeding two seconds. Trintignant's Ferrari developed a crack in its exhaust pipe, prompting the French driver to pit for repairs, which resulted in him dropping to 12th place. At the same time, Maioli enters the pits and hands over his car to Gonzalez, 
who rejoins the race in 10th position. The engine in Kling's Mercedes begins to spray oil, which splatters onto the driver's face and obscures his glasses. Despite this obstacle, Kling persists in the race, navigating the car with limited visibility. On lap 33, the transmission of Musso's Maserati fails, forcing the Italian to retire from the race. Mantovani overtakes Hawthorne and Kling in one lap, moving up to fifth place. However, Hawthorne counterattacks Mantovani and reclaims fifth place on the following lap. Meanwhile, Kling removes his glasses covered in oil, but as he navigates through the Lesmo turn, another burst of oil from the engine sprays directly into his face. Blinded by the sudden impact, Kling swiftly loses control of his car, veering off the track and colliding with the hay bales. Thankfully, he escaped injury, although he required immediate medical attention due to burns to his eyes. Moss chose to advance and closely observe the duel between the two world champions. By lap 38, he successfully passed Fan Zhou, securing second place. However, Fan Zhou swiftly responded reclaiming the lead shortly thereafter. Villaresi managed to close the gap to the Fanjo Moss duo and joined the battle, successfully passing the British driver. With two Maseratis and a Mercedes now running closely together, their collective surge in speed began to significantly reduce the distance to the race leader, Ascari. The trio's intensified pace and coordinated efforts promised an exciting showdown as they steadily approached the front runner. Just two laps later, Villaresi launched another attack, overtaking Fanjo to secure second place. Immediately, he closed the gap on Ascari, putting pressure on the former world champion. Villaresi's Maserati couldn't handle the relentless pace and the car's clutch ultimately failed. After a commendable race, the veteran Italian driver had no choice but to pull into the pits and retire. In his determined efforts, he had pushed the Maserati engine to 8800 RPM, causing the clutch to disintegrate. With Villaresi out, Moss became the sole Maserati representative among the front runners. Determined to make his mark, he launched a fierce attack and once again overtook Fanjo. But Moss does not stop there and passes Ascari, becoming the Grand Prix leader for the first time in his career. Ascari had no intention of surrendering the lead so easily. He counter-attacked Moss, reclaiming his position at the front. However, his Ferrari suddenly began to lose speed, by the end of the lap, Alberto had to pull into the pits, where the mechanics discovered a broken valve in the engine. Realizing that continuing the race was impossible, a disappointed Ascari exited the car. With Ascari's retirement, Moss took the lead once again. In the following 10 laps, Moss, now with a clear track ahead, began to pull away from Fanjo. By lap 60, he had built a 15-second lead making the Englishman the primary contender for victory in the Italian Grand Prix. However, the engine on Moss's Maserati began to rapidly lose oil, forcing the Englishman to turn into the pits. The mechanics quickly topped up the oil and released Sterling back on the track, but not before Fanjo had surged past to reclaim the lead. Moss immediately set off in pursuit of Fanjo, but the oil leak caused the Maserati engine to overheat preventing the Englishman from maintaining his previous pace. Hawthorne caught up with Moss, and while attempting to overtake, gestured to his compatriot, pointing out the trail of oil leaking from the Maserati. Meanwhile, Mantovani experiences suspension issues, allowing Gonzalez to pass him. The engine of Moss's Maserati eventually seizes, forcing the Englishman to pull over to the side of the road. Despite the bitter disappointment of losing a potential victory, 
he remained composed, seeing this Grand Prix as a precursor to his future successes. Meanwhile, Moss's teammate Mantovani makes a pit stop, but the mechanics are unable to repair the damaged suspension on his Maserati, and he is sent back onto the track. As a consequence of this delay, Sergio loses his position to Hermann and drops to fifth place. Fangio, with his main rivals out of contention, smoothly guides his Mercedes across the finish line, claiming his sixth victory of the season. Hawthorne secures second place, capitalizing on the retirements ahead, marking his third podium finish of the season. Gonzalez and Maioli jointly take third place. Despite a forced pit stop, Hans Hermann finishes fourth, while Trintignant secures the final two points with a fifth place finish, albeit facing challenges throughout the race. After the 1954 Italian Grand Prix, Juan Manuel Fangio leads the championship standings with 42 points, having already secured the world championship title. But the battle for the runner-up position in the championship remains open. In second place is Jose Froilan Gonzalez with 25 points. Maurice Trintignant holds third place with 17 points, ahead of Mike Hawthorne and Carl Kling.